you know, virtualization is the terms used in, in multiple places, and in, in I think computer science traditionally there's virtual memory, there's you know virtual file systems, virtual storage, etc. I think you know nowadays virtualization is usually um, used to describe essentially virtual computer, virtual system, and I think depending on uh, where in the spectrum of the tool set you're using, that's everything from a very one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, you, you create a computer with two CPUs and four gigs of RAM and certain storage, or at the kind of cloud, you know, kind of less uh, tightly orchest or orchestrated, but kind of less tightly coupled idea. It's, you know, this idea of memory resources, CPU resources, and storage resources, and they're just kind of arbitrarily connected. Because you can now not only share resources, and people are certainly talking about consolidation and these sorts of things, um, I really think that it's just, it, the next step is that it allows you to abstract at a different level. So, uh, you know, what, let's say, previously required power switches and some fancy physical system management, you can now do in a software layer. And I think when you start to, you know, abstract that away, it means you really start to get um, a lot more powerful paradigms to be used by, by customers. Today, when people talk about virtualization, is you know, now talking about cloud. And cloud is, I think, the first obvious example of, you know, abstracting away physical systems to generic resources. I think you've seen, um, you know, the previous uh, kind of kind of compute model would have been HPC is another good example of people trying to achieve that. Um, but you know, there's a lot of constraints with respect to hardware. Bring up the kernel you're using or the OS, and it just really got sticky. Um, you know, virtualization essentially wipes all that away because we're now presenting the system that you see. We you know intercept. Uh, GDIs and Windows are actually in X do the same thing and do local rendering. You now can have a really high performance virtual graphics card as well, even on the same system. And so that just allows you portability in a way that you didn't previously have. So what's happening is we can we can really leverage those hardware uh, functions very easily. We've uh, I think Linux has always been a great and kind of first stop for hardware enablement. So from a platform standpoint. Um, you know, it's not surprising the lead Linux vendor is in the lead position to provide the lead hypervisor platform kind of components. So I think the people really are starting to, you know, you don't have to explain open source them anymore. You don't have to explain Linux anymore. We've seen that evolve over the last few years. And I think people really understand that open standards are important, open tooling is important, et cetera. You know, I can tell when you go talk to a customer, you don't have to explain the value. They just get it. Um, I think we're, you know, better poised than anybody to, to, to win in that space.